We all dissociate from time to time, and dissociation can look like daydreaming or getting lost in a book, or driving down a familiar road and not remembering how you got home. It's more common than most people realize. Dissociation is basically a separation from conscious awareness. It can range from daydreaming to more serious diagnosis of dissociative identity disorder. This is a serious condition that causes people to lose contact with reality and is often diagnosed with people who experience severe trauma. And this level of dissociation requires dedicated psychological care. For the purpose of this video, we're going to discuss the more, the more common dissociation we all experience from time to time and I'll explain actionable tools to help us become present in daily life. Let's dive in. Hello, I'd like to welcome every self-healer to this healing space. I hope your day is going well. People tend to dissociate to escape feelings of anxiety, depression, fear, and anger. These are uncomfortable feelings and it's human nature to want to avoid discomfort. Mild to moderate dissociation can help us plan and organize and create and develop whereas serious dissociation happens when current reality feels too dangerous and threatening. Dissociative behaviors are there to escape and avoid and get rid of unwanted and intolerable feelings or experiences. It's an automatic built-in system to, to sort of a respond to danger or threat. A possum place that when they are under a threat is kind of similar survival strategy. A drawback of dissociation is that it makes us disappear from the present moment. It causes sort of a, a break in how we our mind handles I information and we may end up feeling disconnected from our thoughts, feelings, or surroundings. It can also affect our sense of identity and, and perception of time. Meditation, breathing exercise, and yoga are the tools that can help us to be mindful and come back to our reality. It, it's a sort of the opposite of dissociation. When we slow down our breath with deep inhales and exhales, and practice mindful movements, we become aware of our bodies and surroundings. Our heart rates slow down and our blood pressure drops and our brain attuned into our surroundings. We become more oriented towards what's happening in the moment. I guess that, that's important too. Using this mindfulness tools or simply making a conscious choice to slow down your physiology will lead to us feel a sense of connection with our mind and body. When we make full contact with our experience in the present moment, we're not really dissociating. It's the opposite of dissociation. Connection means letting go of our thoughts of the past or future and bring yourself back into the right here and now. Eckhart Tolle, author of the book, The Power of Now, states it beautifully. Have you ever experienced, done, thought, or felt outside the now? Nothing ever happened in the past. It happens in the now. Nothing will happen in the future. It will happen in the now. Let's consider the meaning of ACT. ACT is an acronym for A. Accept your internal experience and be present. C. Choose a value direction. T. Take action. And these actions, these things can be only done in the now, right? When we slow down our body and breath, we're in a place to accept our internal experience with a sense of peace and presence. Our experience may not be joyful. It could be a place of anger and grief or whatever feelings that you're having. But in this mindful state, our brain is more likely to choose direction and, and action that aligns with your values. For example, if you're using the, the acceptance and commitment method, human experience, and make a choice to journal about your experience and talk to a close friend. What it's like to ride these waves of your feelings in the here and now. Example of dissociation and not using this acceptance and commitment here and now approach would be someone not accepting their internal experience of sadness instead of choosing a healing action. They might choose to drink or overreact to es escape this hard feeling. Using ACT and practicing here and now, the mindfulness, takes practice. It's also important to not to judge yourself if you realize that you're dissociating because it's also a part of our experience. 
but that we want to practice self-compassion. Self-compassion is important part of being here and now. Acceptance and commitment therapy also talks about observing self. What it's like to observe what's happening now. It's the way to help you move into accepting your internal experience. We allow our mind and body to fully experience here and now. And we, we want to let go of our thinking self. Our thinking self is important. It has a purpose. It tends to be analytical and judgmental. That is necessary in order to move forward. It tells us that things should not be the way they are. That life would be better if we are somewhere else instead of accepting our internal experience. That works. But on the, on the other hand, observing self is non-judgmental. It doesn't think. It, it does not struggle with reality. It sees things as they are without resisting. Let's discuss some actionable tools that we can use to help us not dissociate and accept our reality without resistance. Daily practice of meditation or mindful movement exercise such as Tai Chi, yoga, or simply stretching can help train our brain to be present every day. With daily practice, we are training our, our brain to know what to do when it begins to associate. I'm going to lead us through God. This is a great exercise to do when we are feeling overwhelmed with strong feelings or, or simply daily practice. It teaches us to how to stay grounded and present instead of dissociation. And this is not a new information. We've probably done it one way or the other. However, I just want to give you a structure so that you can go to it on a daily basis. All right, to begin, find a chair or place where you can sit down comfortably. In your mind, try to conjure up some stressful situation and become aware of your body and follow along the instructions that I'll be providing. All right, go to your legs, bring your legs about hip width apart and push your feet down into the floor and feel grounded below you. So we are trying to build that foundation here. And now lean slightly forward and lengthen through your spine and feel the chair beneath you as you're thinking about the spine supporting the whole body. Now slowly press your fingertips together in a prayer position and gently start to circle your elbows and feeling the movements upper your body and into your shoulder. Notice that? Just create that gentle movements around your elbows, around your arms and your shoulder and take a moment to acknowledge the feelings that you're, you're struggling with and that's okay. Just be compassionate with yourself as you do these movements and acknowledge that feelings. It can be sadness, frustration, anger, resentment, whatever that is. Just be with that as you create these movements. So take your time. You can pause the video if you want to and just do it until it's enough for you. Just notice that movement through your upper body and into your shoulder. So take a moment to acknowledge the feelings that you're struggling with. For example, you can say to yourself, here's a sadness, this feels anxiety, here's my grief, here's my frustration. Notice your body around your strong feelings. For example, I feel my anger in my chest and know that you can control the movements and lengthen up your spine. Begin to gently move the whole body. Just allow yourself to move, just allow your body to handle this, whatever the movements it wants to create. For example, allow yourself to stretch your body if that's something your body wants. Just move organically, almost like involuntarily. Have fun with it. Open your mouth if you want to. Allow that big inhale and exhale if that feels good. When it feels enough, come back to your seated position. Again, press your feet down and feel the floor. Just allow yourself to look around your room, turn your head up and down, side to side, orient yourself to the to the room in the in the here and now. As you wrap up this exercise, notice how you're feeling now. What changed in that strong feelings that you had previously? Any change? Do you feel differently? Are you less caught up with those difficult feelings and thoughts? Is it easier for you to focus and engage in the present moment? So take a moment to notice that. Notice any change in your, in your feelings or in the body and in, in your thoughts. Take a time here. I 
personally doing this dropping anchor exercise as a part of my routine. So it's important to have your daily healing practices. These healing practices are like gardening. For the plants to grow strong and healthy, they need to be taken care of on a regular basis. We have to water the plant, we have to prune the plants, we have to see what's, what's lacking. So daily healing practice that we do, it's a, it's a way to maintain our health and well-being. Being mindful and remaining in the present moment are the most effective ways to maintain our healing process. Dropping anchor as a part of your morning routine or use it when you need it will help heal your mind and body for weeks, months, and years, and lifelong. So try to notice when the time machine carries you away and you begin to dissociate. And please bring yourself back to the here and now. So take care of yourself and do your healing every day.